Hey, my name is Seem and this is a short video series about optimizing your nutrition, diet, health, performance and everything else related. Today's guest is Chris Masterjohn. Chris has a PhD in nutritional sciences and he's a currently an independent researcher. He also has his website chrismasterjohnphd.com and a YouTube channel where he creates content and courses about optimizing nutrition. What are some common nutrient deficiencies people experience on the keto diet? On the ketogenic diet, um, it, it, a, a large part of it depends on your perspective on how to do it. So um, I think one thing that everyone agrees with is that you tend to need more electrolytes. And that's because on the ketogenic diet, you tend to lose potassium in the urine. And there are some people who argue that you can fix that just by getting more salt. Uh, I'm of the opinion that you should fix that by getting salt. And they say that because if your salt runs too low, you, you, you can wind up screwing up your potassium balance as well. Mm -hmm. um, I am of the mind that you should not try to fix a potassium deficiency just with salt. So I think you should get more salt and more potassium. And so that means salt your food to taste. And it also means look for the vegetables that have the highest potassium to net carb ratio so that if being in a, on a ketogenic diet is important to you, you can stay keto, but you can load up on those vegetables. Um, to give you an example, watercress is, I believe, the highest uh, potassium to net carb ratio. But you kind of have to judge like what you actually like to eat and what you're willing to eat a large volume of. So it really makes sense to go onto nutrition data and just sort foods by, um, you can't sort by net carbs, but you can sort by high in potassium, low in carbohydrate. And then you can pick the foods that, you, uh, that look appealing to you. You can click on those foods calculate the net carbs by taking out the fiber and just make a spreadsheet of what are the foods that I like to eat most that are in that list, how many of them can I eat and, and hit my carb target, and how well can I get my potassium target. So that's what I would do with that. But I alluded to this uh, when I first started and I didn't really explain it. It really depends on your perspective on how to do the keto diet because so many people on the keto diet are, well, there's basically two camps. Some people are chasing ketones. Some people are not really chasing ketones. They're just kind of trying to be vaguely keto. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, and one of the key differences between those two groups is that the people that aren't really chasing after the highest ketone numbers tend to have a much more liberal attitude towards protein. Mm -hmm. A lot of people who are um, really trying to jack up their keto numbers as high as they can are restricting protein because they will get higher keto numbers if they eat less protein. And the problem with restricting protein is, number one, you won't get enough protein. But the other problem is that um, there, are, there are a lot of nutrients, but basically all the water-soluble vitamins, if you are not getting them from the low-carb plant foods in your diet, you have to get them from your meat mm -hmm. or your eggs or your dairy. Right. And um, if you are only eating fat and you're cutting out the protein, you're cutting out all the animal-based water-soluble vitamins. So all of a sudden, things like thiamine and riboflavin, just basically all the B vitamins, start to become uh, very limiting. Things like iron could start to become limiting. Mm. You could run into basically a whole boat. Or actually, iron and zinc are, is, are super important because even though you may get more iron and zinc from your plant foods than your animal foods, if you're eating a large volume of low net carb vegetables, the absorption of iron and zinc from plant foods is so bad that you really will only get enough if you're eating animal protein. And so I think the keto space has been shifting towards not chasing ketones as much and more chasing results. You know, like the keto gains people, they're not afraid of, of protein, right? And so I think if you have that perspective, it, it protects you from a lot of additional nutrient deficiencies you could have. Yeah, and uh, like most people, they don't need to be strict with keto. Like they don't have epilepsy, and or, well, some people do. But for the average person, their their goals of the keto diet isn't to stay in strict ketosis either. So it's actually better to kind of go out of your way and eat a bit more vegetables, although it may kick you out of ketosis, just to get more of the those uh, potassium and other nutrients. Yeah, most people on the keto diet are not on the keto diet for a reason that has anything to do with the keto diet. <laughs> yeah. like most like most people who do keto are trying to do, lose weight or something like that. You don't need to be on keto to lose weight. <laughs> so, so, you know, it, it's epilepsy for sure, but uh, you can make a, a strong case that um, the actual ketogenic effect of the keto diet is relevant to many psychiatric diseases. 
Um, but I, you can't make that argument for weight loss. For sure. So if you're trying to lose weight or you're trying to like just um, be able to eat less frequently or something like that, then you don't need to be worried about what the blood ketone levels are. <laughs> for sure. Thanks for watching this episode of the Optimal Nutrition Series. Make sure you check out Chris's channel and his nutrition cheat sheet. It can help you to identify nutrition deficiencies, lab testing, blood tests, and how to fix those issues. But other than that, thanks for watching this episode. My name is Seem. Stay tuned for the next episode. Stay empowered.